The following translations are excerpts taken from the book Sensible, Dignified, Valuable written by Billy Edward Albert Meyer. Criticism and Criticism There are two kinds of criticism, on one hand the good, positive criticism, which is laid out to point out things which could be improved and is consequently useful and is bound with good thoughts and feelings, on the other hand, however, there is also the bad and negative criticism which is laid out for the purpose of insulting humans and denigrating their deeds, works and effects, to trample them in the dirt, to negate them and to degrade them in worth. There must be open and honest criticism in the positive context because if, with the human, a mistake is uncovered in his behavior, in his speech or in his works, deeds and actions then it is of no use to him if he is assured that everything is in the best order. One such a wrong assertion does not correspond to the effective truth and therefore makes no sense, let alone then that the concerned human is thereby helped when one conceals the truth, and with that the mistake, from him. As a matter of fact no human is helped if mistakes are uncovered in him, in his behavior, in his speech or in his works, deeds and actions, and then, against better knowledge, it is asserted that everything is no longer bad, while inwardly, however, because of the recognized mistakes, rage froths up and not only the observed mistake is cursed, rather also equally the human who has made the mistake. That is completely wrong behavior which must be replaced by positive, good and healthy criticism because only thereby can the truth take effect and he, the human who made the mistake, can be helped. If the determination of mistakes with a fellow human is not to be in vain, then what is observed and what is thought about it must openly, honestly and clearly be said, and indeed in the form of a good and positive, and never insulting, criticism. This must include a clarification of a matter and point out the facts of the wrong, respectively, of the mistake. But that stipulates that one is not making the mistake, respectively, the wrong, one's self and dignity exists about it. Actually it is namely not acceptable, that if mistakes or wrong behavior is observed with the neighbor, and this also exists in oneself, that the other becomes reproached for this. That then, namely, has nothing more to do with a good, healthy and positive criticism, rather with reproaches and reproach criticism. With good, healthy and positive criticism the faulty, respectively, the wrong, must be distinguished from the right whereby naturally also doubt can come about which must be allowed throughout and must not be forbidden. A healthy, positive and good criticism, as well as doubt, are always permitted to be expressed because they are neither attacking nor insulting. Admittedly, with such kind of critical determinations, the words often ring hard because the neighbor, as a rule, does not willingly hear the truth, which unfortunately is an evil of many humans, yet nevertheless a positive criticism should not be swept under the carpet because it will ultimately still be helpful. Therefore, what is determined as being wrong, respectively, what is faulty, must be said openly and honestly if the situation demands it and it is necessary because only thereby can the fellow humans really be helped. Yet, as was said, the condition is, that a burdening by the same wrong and the same mistakes is not present in oneself. When an open and honest as well as positive talk is carried out, and a criticism is exercised in the same way, then clarity is thereby gained and every rumor has its basis withdrawn. When, however, no attention is given to that, then it forms a basis for mendacious rumors and indeed especially then when a slimy and false politeness prescribes the effectively made observations of something wrong or faulty being pointed out in honesty and truth, openly and healthy and positive criticism. In order for that to happen, however, the human must dare to maintain his thoughts and feelings and also allow them to be outwardly revealed. Therefore he must also dare, in good courage, to be open and honest and to also speak and behave in this way. That applies not only in the interaction with humans, rather also in everyday life and in the workplace. Above all, courage is required, if what is determined, thought and felt is to be said. 
and, equally, courage must be summoned in order for one to really do that which is said to oneself. If the human does not, however, think, feel and behave in this way then there is no progress, whereby self-evidently mistakes and wrongs can also not be corrected. Actually, with everything, however, the question must always stand in the foreground and be answered, whether what there is to say and do is really even sensible and is for something good. If, namely, through the entire matter, even only a single human is injured, even if everything is done with the best intention and good purpose, then that does not bring the neighbor any further. When, therefore, the criticism is brought forward in a too direct and brutal way, then it fails not only in its goal rather it also causes monstrous damage, which can lead to evil animosity. Therefore positive criticism must also be brought forward in words which affect connections and never are constructed on some sort of insinuations or lies and indeed neither small nor big ones. Far too many humans exercise evil, bad and negative criticism of the fellow humans as well as of their behavior, works, speech and deeds, and so forth, although they themselves are burdened with mistakes and errors such that their criticism rings hollow. Thereby, those negative critics are addressed who, out of know-it-allism, out of passion, hate or revenge, as well as out of pure stupidity, criticize everything and anything, badly, degradingly, evilly and negatively and thereby believe that they are the greatest. Truly however they are sick ones who, in the demonizing of others and their works and actions, and so forth, find a strange satisfaction which is medicine for their illness and thereby these critics are so burdened with all the garbage from mistakes and wrongs that they are not able to bear their own burden in regard to this and break down because of it in such a way that they feel an enormous disharmony in themselves and have deteriorated toward dissatisfaction as well as unhappiness. But they deny that vehemently and thereby believe that in this way they could take their fellow humans for stupid. How they deceive themselves in their wretchedness. Also in regard to criticism the human should always tell the effective truth and therefore he should never criticize for the sake of malice and criticism. Normally if the truth is stated, the criticism is beneficial and progress is furthered and indeed also then when the truth is expressed with hard words. However it is never appropriate and must be avoided that other humans are injured or discriminated against maliciously and meanly and through a negative criticism out of a pure negative view of things. Every positive, good criticism in regard to mistakes and wrongs must always be based on effective facts and thereby on absolute truth, whereby the person exercising the criticism must be completely free from the critically contested things which are pointed out in the neighbor who, however, is himself burdened with it and in spite of that exercises negative criticism of others on account of the same mistakes and wrongs, is not more and not less than high-handed, hypocritical and arrogant. Also humans who have fallen to the bad, like evil malicious gossip, lies, sexual wrong behavior, thievery, deceit, murder, senseless talk, terrorism, warmongering support of the death penalty and lack of love, slander, evil and injurious words of falseness and cunning as well as other unworthy things should suspend criticism regarding others who do the same. The same also goes for followers of false religious teaching which will permit humans to be killed for committing shameful acts, in which case the killing, as it is represented by, for example Christianity, Islam and Mahayana Buddhism, religions which speak of love and in their evil and degenerated negative criticism condemn humans to death, is not due to lower reasons, happens without egoism and is for the benefit of the fellow humans. From that alone, it emerges that bad, evil and negative criticism brings great and unspeakable suffering over the humans poisons the will and seeking after true love and neighborly love and makes life hell for so many. The Mistaken Earth Human Way The following is an excerpt from a much longer article entitled, The Mistaken Earth Human Way. In it Billy describes the ugly facts of our current world in no uncertain terms, just as a prophet truth announcer is obliged to do.
we selected the following partly to counter the seemingly increasingly common view among Earth humans in our culture that evil should not be resisted. That is most certainly neither the view of Billy Meyer nor the Pleiaran Extraterrestrials. Trials. From page 69. The mistaken Earth human way leads more and more to naked, unimpeded and incalculable force, to irrationality and to thoughts, feelings, deeds and acts of insanity, which, altogether, can no longer be controlled. The whole thing becomes ever crasser, more criminal, meaner, more extreme, contrary in a way unworthy of being called human, more malicious as well as more despising of humans and life, more fiendish and deadlier, whereby real love, freedom and harmony recede just as much into the distance as does an effective peace. Utter greed and degeneration always increasingly take the upper hand with all imaginable means of evil, while unjust ones and criminals strive only for power, domination, profit, revenge, hate and retribution and indeed in the most diverse families just as much as in the most varied groups, firms, businesses, clubs in the military, in authoritative offices, and in governments, and indeed across the board. Barely a human truly concerns himself about the causal connections of the entire degeneration, frightfulness, and atrocities of every kind because the majority of earth humans think, why should one even worry about that and trouble oneself if it does not affect one's own person, rather only the next person, a family member, the neighbor, a friend or acquaintance or even someone for him, even if every imaginable evil occurs in the world unimpeded, and what of the grief, the angst and the pain as well as the love, the yearned for peace, freedom and harmony of the others, if one's self is not even involved and remains spared from all evil. Often and with many, however, the impulse for justification and assuaging of guilt also emerges which they then simply attempt to brush aside with a generous donation of money or a gift for the needy. And, actually, in this way, some can calm their bad consciences in order to then further devote themselves to their indifference regarding all horrors and need as well as in regard to the entire misery of this world. So some erroneously believe that they have exercised their duty to their fellow humans with a donation and indeed not considering that this is not the case and that their donation is not in the least the end of their obligation. As a matter of fact, monstrously much more lies namely in the duty of the human being than a soulless, material donation in the form of money, material things and assistance in emergencies, as, for example, with catastrophes in the form of earthquakes, avalanches, floods and other such things. What is really called for, and is the most important of all is, on one hand, maintained, responsibility conscious, peaceful and valuable interpersonal relationships, which not only must be extended to family members as well as friends and acquaintances, rather must exist with every individual human of the terrestrial population, and indeed, it is all the same regardless of whether he is rich or poor, to which race, skin color, religion and to which belief, or which level of society, he belongs. And it is stipulated that everyone speaks with his neighbor, which every human personifies, and that the word and the voice are raised in honesty and everything is said, screamed out and even roared out, or is written, which, in the name of justice, of righteousness and humanity, of human dignity, of peace, love and freedom must be said, screamed, roared and written. Thereby, however, the corresponding active deeds must not be forgotten and not come too late, because this is of just as much importance. Consciousness Revolution From page 186 the consciousness revolutionaries are those who make the effort themselves with progress and evolution, who fight for more just legal constitutions and against the death penalty, who themselves establish true justice and humanity and grant real help to the humans that suffer in need. It is they who do not satisfy themselves with half measures, but only with totalities to fully establish themselves and make life worth living for themselves and many others. They fight to make life acceptable again for victims of all kinds of acts of violence, faithfully, then, standing by in honest ways and love, 
to demand an end to poverty and to create peace and freedom through enforced non-violence. Unfortunately not all humans do that, but only a meager number, who have a good understanding for bringing about a true life and who also lead this true life. With them, it is not thereby done simply to donate some money or goods for those in need, in order thereby to silence one's conscience, because one is going better than the poor, as is unfortunately often the case. So it is therefore wrong to assume that essentially everybody attempts to be a real human, because in truth the majority of humanity thinks only immediately of itself, and therefore not further than just to the tip of its own nose. So it is truly only the consciousness revolutionaries who do what is right, after their own understanding, and in their own individual way and manner, and thereby are making an effort to form every little tiny place on the earth into a small, beautiful and lovely paradise. From pages 191 and 192. Even though, up until now, no systems of belief were in the position to establish, for all humans generally, morally binding guidelines, concepts, rules, laws and principles, and so forth, which are constructed on creational natural values and not only on many kinds of inadequate human regulations which are just for show, and so forth, the human can indeed do something quite positive. Therefore, efforts should be prominent to produce concepts, ordinances, laws, guidelines and principles, and so forth, according to creational natural values, which completely take hold in acceptable frameworks and convey to the human that an urgent change to the better is necessary. So, if this chance can be successfully grasped, then it is also necessary that it actually is grasped and worked upon so that its reification succeeds. To that end, however, the human requires criteria, which he is taught, so that he can understand and recognize how to distinguish between evil force and enforced non-violence, that terrorism also if it is practiced by power-hungry and insane state powers is not the way to peace, love and freedom. So, also in political and militaristic occurrences, ways and means have to be found which are not built on blatant force and power greed, in order to create and maintain order, peace and freedom. Enforced non-violence is, to that end, the way of passive, logical force, because, in other words, enforced non-violence means active forcelessness, with which forcelessness is practiced and carried out forcefully, respectively, actively. Enforced non-violence, however, also means passive resistance, whereby passivity, in this sense, describes a strength, respectively a power, or even passive force, because power, might and force, even in a forceless, passive form, represent a form of forcibleness which is, however, practiced in enforced non-violence. Thereby, however, this forceless, respectively, passive, forcibleness may not be understood in the sense of the usual earth human understanding of negative force, rather only in the sense of a positive, pacifying, harmonizing, balancing, uplifting and order producing implementation in the form of passive resistance which offers power, might and influence, and so forth, in logical ways. The End